Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Albans Cathedral. Happy Easter, all of you. It's great to gather together. Um, just to let you know that the Easter Bunny has arrived for each of you. Um, so as you leave, the Bishop will be handing out some, some chocolates. So do make sure you take a chocolate away with you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. A very warm welcome to you on this glorious uh, spring day as we gather to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We do so against the background of a year of pain and turmoil for many people, and as we come in our worship, giving thanks to God for his promise of new life and resurrection, we remember them and one another and support each other as we look in confidence to God's future. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of thy Son hast overcome the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to thee in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of the sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, 
But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she taught, saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee O Christ. And so may I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last month, John Polkinghorne died at the age of 91. John was a distinguished professor of mathematical physics at the University of Cambridge, fellow at the Royal Society, prolific author on the interface of science and religion, and to top it off, he was also ordained as an Anglican priest. He understood the worlds of science and theology, not as separate or in conflict, but both rooted in what he called the graciousness of God. Now, for most of us who never moved beyond GCSE physics, and that certainly includes me, where we were left with the distinct impression that science and theology were implacably opposed to each other, John Polkinghorne, as a scientist and a Christian, argued against the fundamentalism of atheistic scientists like Richard Dawkins, and also argued against those who suggested that neither science nor theology can offer us anything other than provisional models of how we can understand ourselves and our world. John wanted science and theology to be in dialogue with each other, adopting the attitude of what he called critical realism. Of course, many of the theoretical physicists working at the far extremes of scientific thought are some of the least dogmatic people you'll ever meet, and who will tell you quite cheerfully that they're faced daily with mystery, discovery, and wonder. They're often confused by the results of new experiments from the Large Hydron Collider at CERN, and everything they claim is only provisional. 
the writer, Annie Dillard, commented, for some reason, it's not yet trickled down to the person in the street that some physicists are now a bunch of wild-eyed raving mystics, for they've perfected their instruments and methods just enough to whisk away the crucial veil, and what stands revealed is the Cheshire Cat's grin. Well, what has all this got to do with us on this most important festival of the Christian year, Easter Day? The theoretical physicist Carlo Rovelli in his book Helgoland has argued that all reality, as he put it, is relational. Nothing can exist except in relation to something else. Now, I can't pretend I understand all this thing. I've loved trying to read it and, and, uh, and plough my way through it, but I get the general drift. Nothing can exist except in relation to something else. But of course, as a Christian, I believe that nothing can exist except in relation to someone else. We're not atoms floating in a sea of chaos or chance. The universe is not about randomness, but about relationship. We are made to know God and enjoy God forever, and it's in and through Jesus Christ that the whole of creation is held and sustained. As St. Paul put it in Colossians, Christ is the image of the invisible God, for in him all things were created, things visible and invisible, thrones or dominions or rulers and powers, all things are being created through him and for him. As we celebrate Easter, we're reminded that the God who created the world is the one who is recreating and redeeming it through his divine love. The resurrection provides us with a, a pair of spectacles which brings all our experiences, our hopes, our fears into a new focus so we begin to see things in a new way. The events of Easter explain how a motley band of semi-educated disciples could transform the face of the world as they went out with a message of radical love. The Easter hope makes sense of our common human experience found in every tribe and nation and people in every age that refuses to accept that death is simply annihilation and defiantly and resolutely insists that our souls live on. And today's gospel from John chapter 20 tells us that God is bringing to life that new creation. That insight may not have been immediately apparent on the first reading, but to the people who read of these events as recounted by St. John, the resonances would have been clear. St. John is drawing on the early chapters of Genesis, when on the first day, out of darkness, God calls forth light and life. That's why John's account of the resurrection starts early in the morning, while it was still dark. John's account is placed in a garden, echoing the Garden of Eden. Then the first gardener was Adam. Now the second Adam. Jesus is the gardener. St. John is telling us that in Christ there is a new creation breaking in and through our world. Here indeed is the second Adam inviting us to be transformed and to share in his risen life. That is the irrepressible hope of Easter that extends to this and every generation. Let me close with a true story, a story that comes from the Soviet Union at the height of the revolution. In his day, Nikolai Ivanovich Bukharin was one of the most prominent Bolshevik revolutionaries in the Soviet Union. After six years in exile, working closely with Lenin and Trotsky, he became a member of the Politburo and editor of the Soviet newspaper Pravda. Part of the communist ideology was to suppress all religion, if necessary, by force. On one occasion in 1930, Bukharin travelled down to the Ukraine, to Kiev, for a mass rally at which he attempted to demolish Christianity. Using his formidable intellect and powerful rhetoric, he launched into a tirade of argument, drawing on philosophy and science and every argument he could think of. At the end of his speech, 
he paused, glowered at the crowd standing before him and shouted out rhetorically, what do you have to say to that? You could have heard a pin drop. There was complete silence as Bukharin nodded in satisfaction, thinking through sheer intellectual argument and powerful rhetoric, he persuaded the large crowds, most of whom had been raised in the orthodox faith, of the stupidity and pointlessness of their former faith. But then, one person slowly stood up, looked around at the crowd, opened his mouth and shouted out the ancient Easter greeting they'd known from their youth. Christos, vos crece, he bellowed. Christ is risen. The entire crowd to a person stood up and responded in a cry which echoed again and again round the stadium. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Despite all the things we may face, Despite all the unknowing of the months that lie ahead, we too can rest in the great Christian hope. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please would you stand to join me in the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we humbly beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, that all who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, and especially we pray for those who are preparing for their deaconing or priesting this summer. Grant that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present and particularly those who are watching online and cannot be here in person, that each one of us may serve thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. 
We beseech thee, O Lord, to direct with thy heavenly wisdom those who rule over the nations of the world. We pray for our government, our Prime Minister, for all who are seeking to work for the common good. And in particular, we ask you to bless thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who exercise authority under her, that thy people may be faithfully and justly governed. Lord, hear us. Lord, 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 Of thy goodness, O Lord, help and comfort all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need sickness or any adversity. And in a moment of quiet, we name them before God. Grant them a happy issue out of all their afflictions. Lord, hear us. We commend to thy gracious keeping, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And again, we remember those known to us who have now passed to be with Christ. beseeching thee to grant them everlasting light and peace. Lord, hear us. We bless thy holy name for the grace and virtue declared in the Blessed Virgin Mary, Alban, and in all thy saints. Grant that we, rejoicing in their fellowship and following their good examples, may be partakers with them of thy heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let's give each other a distance. Greeting of God's peace.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto thee, our Lord, our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee because thou didst raise him gloriously from the dead. For he is the true paschal lamb who was offered for us and was taken and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying. Glory be to thee, Almighty Father, our he Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, re-receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption didst give thine only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection hast delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily unto sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. God the Father, by whose glory was raised, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.